Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. Finally, as you can see, I am back home. Five days away in Southampton. I'm still exhausted, to be honest, but we're back. We go again on Thursday, while just two days away at the next match. I can't wait for it. now. Everton been struggling all season long. Great chance to go down there and do the double of them once again. But yeah, that's until Thursday. This is now the aftermath of the Chelsea game. There was a lot to talk about. Isaac Hayden, potential fighting from the Premier League. Sir Max and Moore, people kicking off for him. There's all sorts going on. The referee himself, the officials, we're getting to it all. But anyway, guys, as always, you are new to the channel. Make sure to subscribe. I highly appreciate your support, as always. Everything will always come on the channel. But anyway, quick shout out, by the way. Thank you so much to everyone that's donated to my Core 5 page. 109 coffees bought so far. That's a lot of coffee to drink. But seriously, though, thank you so much. I really do appreciate your donations. If ever any of you guys want to donate, I will put it down in the pinned comment. It's also in my channel as well. So, again, appreciate any donations. You don't have to be doing one, but it highly helps out with the channel. But, yeah, uh, without further ado, though, let's get into the news. Quickly regarding fixtures before we talk about the news, actually, the women's team play tomorrow. They play on a Wednesday night, which is quite well for them. So, I'll quickly give a disclaimer there. So, make sure you get yourselves down to Drew Park for Derby Day if you can make the game. And you might have seen my poll on YouTube yesterday, uh, Friday the 1st of April, there was a fixture clash, two massive games, that's what I'm really ticked off about that one. When is it ever like a fixture clash on a Friday night? But anyway, the women's team, they play their final at Wickley Park, which is where the under-23s normally play. Now, at the minute, I've done the polls everywhere. Uh, on Instagram, the under-23s are dominating, but on YouTube and Twitter, the women's team's winning, which I'm really glad, by the way, because I, I like that people actually... I was starting to care about the women's team because it was way more dominated early in the season. But anyway, despite that though, I'm going to think about it because at Wickley Park, there's no elevation. So when I record my videos, the lighting really the damages the quality of the video. And it's just a bit of a nightmare. And this final as well, it's, it's a bigger game in two days' time against Liverpool Feds. This final, you expect the women's team to win, so it's not really like a, oh my god, how's this going to go? And whereas the Derby Day in Middlesbrough, it's in Middlesbrough Stadium, which I've never been to before, and that's one I really want to take off. So I'm going to think about this one. But uh, again, no, guys, I will take your vote into consideration. Let's begin off by talking about the referee in the Chelsea match, Mr. David Coote. I can think of many words begin with C to describe that man. But let's look at the matches he's actually refereed for the Castle this season. The first one, Villa away, 2-0 defeat, VAR beat Shambles in the game, really. Lascelles handball, that for me was apparently. However, Martinez took out Callum Wilson, which should have been a red card regardless of whether he was onside or offside. That was the first match just ruined by VAR. Second match, Brighton away now, Sanchez takes out Callum Wilson. The referee, David Coote, gives out a yellow card. VAR then tells him to go lock on the monitor. Then he comes back and gives a red card. So that was a huge mistake he made. And now the Chelsea match. Look at the picture there. Clear and obvious penalty not given at all. VAR, to be fair, should have told him to look at the monitor. They didn't tell him at all. So they made a big mistake as well. But the referee was in the wrong position. He couldn't see the player. He was obstructed by our players. Uh, it's just, what do I even begin to say about this? It's just an absolute force. How has VR looked at that? Well, not even looked at that. It's such an obvious mistake. That's what it's brought in to do, to fix mistakes. And it didn't fix that mistake. So it's understandable why Newcastle are angry. Now, Eddie Howe's discussed the R1, the, the potential red card, and he said it's quite subjective. So some referees would give it as a red, others would give it a yellow. So he was understand of that one. How though, it was a stonewall penalty, which he was annoyed by, which everyone was annoyed by, really, because... A penalty in that game was huge, and Newcastle went 1-0 up. I think we'll at least draw the game, which is obviously a better result than what we got in the end. It's just not good enough, really. It's not good enough. And David Coote, I don't want to see referee in Newcastle game again. I've had enough of this guy. Let's talk about adding Sir Max, but now so he made his return against Chelsea on Sunday. A lot of fans were really angry at him after the match. So long story short, all the coaches and players came out to clap the fans at the end of the game. Adding Sir Max did not do that. He was speaking to the Chelsea players instead before eventually going down the tunnel. I remember at Liverpool, I called out and Joe Woodick for doing this, so I'm going to call this out how I see it. I believe every player should come over and clap the fans, regardless of the result, the away fans, because we spend a lot of money and a lot of time to get down to those games. For example, me, I went down to Southampton for five days for the Southampton and the Chelsea game. It was not cheap, OK? So I feel like the players should at least come over and acknowledge the fans, regardless of how happy or angry or the result. Admittedly, with Sir Maxman, as silly as it sounds, maybe he just forgot, maybe it slipped his mind. He hasn't been in the team last month or so. You just might not know that. I, I mean, if he comes and claps the fans with Everton, okay, that's fine. But if he obviously does this again, then I'm just not going to get a bit annoyed. 
But yeah, a lot of fans have really started turning him as a result of that. Some people are questioning if he should be at the club at the end of the season, saying that, oh, well, we don't want him here. He's not, he's not fitting Eddie Howe's style of play. He's not fitting his philosophy. It's just incredible. This guy has carried us for the last couple of seasons. I think people need to remember that. It's quite hard to forget that only five months ago we had Steve Bruce as a manager and we were 19th or 20th in the league. It's quite hard to remember that. So listen, we've got to remember where we were a season ago. So Maxim was a key player for us staying up. Even if he's... Even he doesn't give 100% here and there or maybe that he did something that fans might not like. I think we should still remember the kind of impact he made and stick by him. Because, yes, I didn't think he did much against Chelsea, but again, he's been injured. I remember a couple weeks ago, obviously, I made a video talking about how people were saying he was faking his injury and now we're saying, oh, he doesn't care about the fans. It's, it's one of these. I think people will jump on him because of just two years. He's a kind of flair player. I just think flair players are kind of players that... Fans would naturally jump on if they don't perform well. But yeah, that's just my thoughts about it anyway. I believe you should have came out to clap the fans. Some people may not think it's a big deal, but I personally do think it is. I think every player should acknowledge the fans, especially in that match. We need the reassurance that the team is united. I think it doesn't sound like much, but I do think it makes an impact when players don't come out to clap the fans. It doesn't it shows the team's disconnected, which I personally don't agree with. But anyway, that's just my thoughts about it anyway. A couple of comments there. People... Quite mixed response. Some people have really turned against him. That's, I'm quite surprised by that. But yeah, at the end of the season, we'll see what happens. A lot of people will question how he's spending more time these these Helios calls. You know what I mean? All right. But yeah, let me know your thoughts down below on Alan Sir Max. And personally, for me, he should have clapped the fans. But if he scores a win against Everton, I don't care. I'm going to be honest. Let's talk about the main topic of the video now, Isaac Hayden. Now, he made some comment about the referee after the game saying that the cast were unlucky today against 12-man Chelsea. It doesn't sound like much, but this could have serious repercussions on the player himself because he's clearly just saying there that, listen, the referee was playing for Chelsea. Which, to be fair, yes, the referee was just terrible in that game. A lot of things went against the castle, and I hope he did cost us the game. He's correct on that. However, though, the Premier League are notorious for wanting to protect referees and anything that goes against the referee or slags the referee or... Normally results in a fine. Now, Rafa Benitez was actually fined 60 grand for a comment towards Andrew Maria back in 2018. And that was such a flimsy comment as well. Like, it was like, it was nothing in it. Whereas, yeah, I know, again, Hayden, you can clearly tell he's just frustrated at the game. But these are the sort of things that the Premier League would come down on. He will actually probably at some point get taught to take the tweet down. If not, getting some trouble behind the scenes at the club or potentially fine, as I said in the video. It's just, it, I mean, the thing is, we'll find football players for complaining about the referees, but we won't find the referees for doing a terrible job. That was a clear and obvious penalty that the referee and VAR missed. And as a result now, it's potential that Isaac Hayden got fined for a match he doesn't even take part in. He's still injured. He's not even the 25-man squad. It's just laughable, to be honest. I'm sick of this protection of the referees. I personally think that referees should have to come out in interviews and discuss why they made certain decisions so we can judge whether it's a referee error or a VR error because I think people will be more understanding the referees if we heard their point of view David Coote if we all, if he came out and said well I didn't think there was enough contact in it then we could fully slag him off because we know there was clear contact in it or if he came out and said that I didn't see instant Percy there were players in my way I didn't see Jake Murphy get fouled then he could argue with VR because VR should have told him to go look at the monitor I don't agree with that. Oh, I think referees get protected way too much. They cost games. They could potentially send teams down. I thank you for Newcastle. I think we'll be all right no matter what. But that could cost us a place in the league and that would be more money in the summer. <clears throat> so I do think referees should be held accountable. I think they should definitely be fined sometimes as well when there's clear and obvious hours like that one. And it's just, I don't like the fact that players aren't allowed to discuss it because it, it, it's a clear joke at this point. The referee, the fish in the Premier League is shocking, let's be honest. You don't see any of these referees go to the World Cup or the Euros, and there's a reason why, because they're not good enough. They are simply not good enough. It, no, I've had enough of them, personally. It's just, the fish is just terrible in the Premier League, it really is. But anyway, guys, and some positive news now. Shiraz Bar, the sign is back. It isn't open just yet. When it's open, though, I will do a vlog, don't you worry. However, the sign has went back up today, so if you walk past the James Park in time soon, the Shiraz Bar logo is back so yeah that's gonna be great to see but guys just hold on tight though i get a vlog out at some point you gotta be patient 
But anyway, though, I appreciate your support. As always, let me know your thoughts down below. Plenty of discourse. I mean, I just want to get the Chelsea game on my head now. Forget about that game. Move on to Everton next. The Everton game itself, we should be winning that game, I'll be honest. I'd be disappointed if we do not win that game. It's the best way of putting it. We've got to go down there. We've got to try and beat them. Everton have got a serious chance of being relegated. So I'd love to put the nail in that coffin, especially the hard fixtures coming up. But anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts down below. Appreciate your comments. And uh, I... I'll uh, see you on the next one tomorrow for the women's match and then Thursday for Everton away.